<laughs> if God didn't remember anything, could he still be all-knowing? Obviously he can't be. You, if God can't forget something and still be all-knowing. But what it means is, it's not that God forgets in the fact that he's suddenly got am am amnesia to it. What it means is, it means that it's, you're released from it. It's just like in, the, in our English language, if someone owes you some money, and they say, oh, I can't afford the money, I'll forget it. Mm -hmm. it, it just means it's, it's clear, the, the, the slate is clear. It's never going to be raised up again, that's what it means. Obviously, God can't forget things and still remain, <laughs> still remain omniscient. <laughs> that would be quite a contradiction, wouldn't it? God knows all things, but he can't remember some things. Okay, now then, we said that before, let me go over that. Salvation is a gospel call, regeneration made it possible, and God declares our sins forgiven. Now, the Bible tells us that in Romans 8, verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. And uh, the Amplified Bible makes it a little bit clearer. It, it said, and those whom he lust for, for ordained, he also called. And to those he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteousness, putting them into the right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them up, to a heavenly dignity, conditions or state of being. We are justified, which means that we're bent to our higher state and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places and we become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a Amen. peculiar people. We are translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We become a holy people. Amen. And, that is our, and that is our standing with God. But we can see that there was already covered in past weeks. First of all, our salvation is based on predestination. God has already chosen from before the foundation of the world who should be, who should be saved. And for those who we chose, he called to preach the gospel. We, go, we don't know who the elects are. So we go and preach to everybody. And those whom he called, those that are called, he justified. He justified. And those that he justified, he glorified. And there's your eternal security right there. There's your, that's also your doctrine of eternal security, which is found in, um, which is also found in John chapter six, which says, "All that the Father gives me shall come, and he that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out, and I will raise him up in the last days." So the one that is called is the one that's going to be raised up in the last days. So therefore, there's your eternal security. The one that he saves is going to be there in the end. He will lose none. Amen. He will lose none. So there's your eternal security right there. So therefore, because we are justified and declared righteousness of God, that we are, we are not under any kind of condemnation. And as Romans 1 verse 1 says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version here, therefore there is no condemnation, no judging, guilty or wrong, for those who are in Christ, who live and walk, not after the, the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the, of the Spirit. And as the King James Version says, which I refer, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So we are justified, we are no longer condemned. So very, justification is instant. But sanctification is progressive. We are continually being separated. That is why... We are not all, we're not completely sanctified. We are, in a sense, sanctified, separated unto God. But there, but there are things that continue in our life that if we listen to the Word of God, we start to make adjustments. I mean, um, for instance, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all sin. But the Bible says that we must cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh. So there is that kind of separating where we come out from among them and be ye separate. And that is why we still need preachers, because we listen to the Word of God, and we find that there are things in our life that we need to adjust, and we do it accordingly. So there is sanctification unto salvation, but then God is still dealing with us. God is still perfecting us. 
So there is a difference, but I will cover sanctification next week. But this week I want to take a look at justification. And justification is not to be confused with sanctification. Because justified is instant. Now I want you to understand this and get it across. Amen. That once you are born again, once you become a child of God, you are as saved as you will ever be. Amen. And you will not lose, and if it's genuine salvation, it cannot be lost. And you cannot be made any more righteous than you are now. Because you have got the righteousness of Christ. You have been imputed with the righteousness of Christ. Now how can you get any more righteous than Christ is? <laughs> That's impossible. So you actually, you are, you realise that you are righteous. Uh, God sees you righteous. Now, the Bible is clear that justification proceeds faith. Regenerate, um, regeneration precedes faith. But justification proceeds faith. Believe me, you could not exercise faith to be saved because you were dead in trespasses and sins. And it's not your faith anyway. He, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And someone said to me once, quote in the book of Romans, and says that the Bible says that God has given to every man the measure of faith. So every man has got faith. Well, the Bible also says that all men have not faith. And when Paul was right, and you see, this is where context is very important. When Paul, when, when, when Paul was writing to the Roman and saying all men have faith, he was talking to the Roman church. He was talking. He was, he was writing to the saints. He was writing to the. He was writing to the Christians in Rome. So context is a uh, very, very important. Um, because there are some people that do not believe that you are literally dead in trespasses and sins. Remember, remember a couple of weeks ago we talked the difference between Pelagianism mm -hmm. and semi-Pelagianism. Mm -hmm. Pelagianism believes that um, Pelagianism but doesn't deny original sin. The only one that suffered from Adam's sin was Adam, Adam. and sin was not passed on to anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, semi-Pelagianism believes that man is tainted with sin but not necessarily totally dead in sin but is able to respond and uh, most of what the, the big evangelists around today are not Pelagianism but are semi-Pelagianism though Charles Finney was a, semi, was a full Pelagianist and, uh, but most of them today are semi-Pelagianists and believe that oh, well you are tainted with sin well you're not, the Bible doesn't teach that we are tainted with sin the Bible tells us that we are dead in sin that, 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 that the sin of Adam has affected every area of ourselves and there is no life in us. Mm -hmm. That is why Jesus said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We, we had a biological existence mm -hmm. but we did not have the life of God which is a Zoe life. Mm -hmm. we, were cut off from, we were cut off from God. Mm -hmm. We were alienated from God. Mm -hmm. We were under the wrath of God. We were on our way to a lost eternity. Praise Jesus. And uh, this is what makes me laugh when I hear when I hear people telling when I hear when the when the Bible tells us about the nature of God and the nature of man, and the Bible tells us about the condition of man and how that man is totally depraved in every area of his life. He is alienated from God. He's under the wrath of God. God is angry with the sinners every day and the preacher comes up and says God loves you just the way you are. <laughs> so anyway, that's another... That's, um, we've already covered those areas. So the, We're talking about the Bible is clear that justification proceeds. That means it comes after faith. Now, that doesn't, it's not the result of your faith. It's God's, God gives you that faith. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because nothing to do with your salvation comes from you. It wasn't your decision. Mm -hmm. You weren't saved because you were smart enough, uh, smart than anybody else. Mm -hmm. It was all of God. Mm -hmm. So the Bible is clear. Uh, Romans three twenty six. 